to knowledge base. Um, this is Zach from Cisco Systems. Um, and today we'll be discussing how to configure um, SOX proxy with authentication. Um, this is the continuation of the previous knowledge base where we talked about um, uh, configuring SOX proxy with the web security appliances. And this is an extension where if we enable authentication with the SOX proxy and what need to happen on the configuration side. So how to configure SOX proxy with authentication. Just keep in mind today's uh, deployment, uh, we support uh, basic authentication only at this time. To begin, what is a SOX proxy? Just a reminder, it's a way to pass uh, IP traffic from an intranet to internet via single server. It is an RFC 1928 and uh, that can be uh, reviewed for further detail if need be. Um, the config steps remains uh, pretty straightforward. From the GUI, we enable first security services SOX proxy. Once it's enabled, we create an identity uh, and then in this time with the identity we enable SOX proxy and we enable authentication assuming uh, that we do have join uh, an AD domain and uh, from uh, web security appliance. With the basic authentication we'll tie that identity with the SOX policy under web security manager SOX policy and you add a policy there and then you tie it with the identity created in above steps. Um, the couple of things to make a note, in the majority of the deployment out in the field uh, today with the SOX proxy is designed to work on the terminal servers uh, with the SOX app. What that allows in turns is the, to point an explicit connection to a web security appliance or a proxy server with the authentication credentials configured and that's how uh, it sends a request on a particular port in our environment for web security appliances listed on port 1080. Conversely, for testing, um, what can be done is uh, for authentication purpose, we can use a Safari a browser or Chrome on a Macintosh, and that will work as well. Um, and then the third option, which probably will be least desired in the field, where enable HTTP and HTTPS protocol along with uh, SOX on the given identity and that uses the uh, authentication surrogate type which is IP address if you choose. Uh, so so th this is similar to what uh, we have done in past where in order for HTTPS for authentication group to work we have to visit an HTTP site and that uses the IP surrogate in terms so similar pretty similar to that but again uh, option one is the one is designed to work from the terminal servers. Uh, for testing, we can use from Safari and Chrome on Mac. What is not supported today? Um, so the reason for that, all these browsers, Firefox, IE in the field, especially on the Windows client, they do not send a request uh, with the authentication. So if you want to compare uh, similar to what uh, HTTP 407 today we see for port 80 traffic uh, if you're looking at the packet capture. So with the SOX uh, request, that authentication is not sent by the browser and that's why we see a failure. And you probably will see 503 so on a SOX hello failure. Um, all the other options, as I think we talked about in a previous uh, knowledge base, uh, SSL decryption is SOX Connect is not supported today. Uh, and no upstream proxy and SOX version 5 is the only one supported and IPv6 is it's not there yet. So with that let's uh, look at the config. Um, what I have done, I have configured I've co configured an identity and it's called SOX identity and just to show you what's in there. So just the name SOX identity and then we have SOX protocol enable and then well I'm called NetApp. Um, in my case I also put the support guest privilege but you don't have to. If you notice the uh, select scheme is basic and this is the, the critical part. Um, enabling is right here so actually we took a step backward but that's where you enable SOX proxy. So step one is enable SOX proxy that's pretty straightforward. 
Once your identity is created, you come down here in Web Security Manager, not an access policy, it's a SOX policy. So it requires tie within the SOX policy. So what I've done, I created a uh, SOX policy, just called it SOX policy one, tied with this identity, SOX identity. Um, and then all users. If you want to look at the particular users uh, that you want to add to it, or um, if the requirement for the field is to um, to have more than more than one, that can be done here with the pulling the group. Okay. Okay. Nothing shown in here. Let's come out. Go back here. So for whatever reason, um, didn't show up the first time, but the, here are the, the NetApp uh, groups. So I can create and pull these groups out to my right and create a policy best based on that for users. So for, for example, for admin, domain user, computer, and, and so on and so forth. Cancel out of here. So that's to the extent to config on um, Web security appliance, and you see I have added port 80, 443, and some other ports. To look to test actual config, so what I've done is I have a Chrome. So with Chrome, um, just to show you the config here, actually, we can go under setting, advanced setting. That will allow us to look at the and configure proxy setting, uh, change proxy setting here. So in my example, I've been using a SOX. So if you unhighlight that, this is the web security appliance that I'm using 172.18.254.100. And that's my port that uh, web security appliance is listening on. Since this is a basic authentication, uh, it requires the domain backslash username and my, my password. Pretty straightforward. So, and just to mention, um, when we're looking at the terminal servers on the SOX app side in the field, that would be pretty similar to this where an explicit connection to a proxy server, uh, or web security appliance in our case, and then credential, user credentials uh, configured. So these are hard-coded. When the request goes out in 10, port 1080, credentials are along with it and get cached. So check that and no changes, we'll cancel that. So looking at the, this example here in bbc.com, I site went to, I'm only sending a traffic on port 80. If I'm telling a log, which I have here, um, if you look at these items are remains the same. This is my client IP. Um, SOX connect and it's going to be tunneling this information. What's important is you must match the SOX policy. So if for whatever reason if it's jumping over to an access policy then that is not using SOX. And you, as you see that the SOX connect tunnel this is a port 80 traffic but it's tunneling over on 1080. Uh, and then SOX policy is the one, and then um, SOX identity. So first we match SOX identity, then we match SOX policy under Web Security Manager and SOX policy, not the, um, not the access policy. Um, as for when a failure occurs, what to expect, what we would see, we will see 503s, and see, I think, uh, let's see, we're testing, which did configure some of it, so should have some failures. And, okay, there are some. So, in this case, if we, if we look at it, um, TCP deny, and this is the client IP coming from, this is the one of the AD servers. So, the reason for that is 503 socks hello deny is when the client such as Firefox or IE from Windows client sends the request on port 1080 it does not send the authentication credentials hence 
we don't understand the SOX process, process requires the credentials in order to proceed. And you'll see that the identity does match, but it's not, since it doesn't have a credentials, it does not match the SOX policy. So we'll take a look. Um, in our case, uh, I think I have one. So here is my Windows client. Uh, and if you look at the config itself, so I have a explicit proxy configure on same web security content uh, appliance and then port 1080. This is the, the port we're listening on. And once I try to go to www.google.com, I'm able to connect and you will see um, the log as we looked at it, the 503 deny. So that brings us back to the points. Let me see here. That brings us to the uh, right here. Uh, not all browsers allow SOX with authentication, for example, Firefox um, and IE. And that's the, uh, that's, that is the failure. Now, if you look on the packet level, so let's go down. I think I have captured some. So first of all, this one is a successful one. The access log on I'm using virtual web security appliance matches the intended access, I mean, uh, intended um, SOX policy, and this is not access policy, SOX policy. So let's typo here. So in this case, if you look at the SOX policy and then uh, SOX identity, and it's the connect tunnel username uh, administrator coming from AD. And then we'll come down. We'll look at the not working example, and that's where we said if we uncheck HTTP and HTTPS from the identity. What it's talking about is over here. We go under identity, SOX identity, and that's the HTTP and HTTPS. HTTP and HTTPS option right here. Um, that we are referring to. So if we uncheck that identity, we're going to see SOX TCP deny 503 and SOX hello. On the packet level, this, are, this is my client at the web security appliance. Client sends uh, version 5 SOX communication socket. If you look at the client authentication method, have said no authentication, and that's where it fails at this point. Um, so that covers pretty much the topic. And let's go over and review what we talked about it. Um, just a couple of things. First of all, the SOX proxy um, with authentication. Today we support basic authentication only. Um, and then configuring is creating a SOX identity and tying with the SOX policy. And then in the field, we'll see SOX proxy is designed to work with the terminal, terminal servers with the SOX app pointing explicitly. Uh, and then auth credentials are being hard-coded as well. So these are the options currently not supported. Um, it will be coming soon. Um, with that, that will wrap up this dis discussion um, and the topic. And then uh, we'll see you in another knowledge space. Thank you.